it's time to join Montana's very own and your voice for agriculture, Talkin' Ag Lane Nordland for today's LaneCast. Hey friends, thanks for joining us here on the LaneCast Ag Podcast. I'm Lane Nordland, and today we are going to talk about lab-growing meat. Yes, we are, along with some results as well of testing of beef in states where H5N1 is located where dairy cattle tested positive there for the bird flu we will also take a look at some cow calf pairs here this weekend but first let's go to that topic of lab growing meat i call it petri dish protein or pdps but it's a product that you will not be finding on the menu in the sunshine state that's because florida governor ron DeSantis has signed a bill to prohibit the sale of lab growing meat in the state Take your fake lab-grown meat elsewhere. We're not doing that in the state of Florida. Now, that clip was captured by Fox 13 out of Tampa. And this action by the state of Florida and its lawmakers is gaining praise from family cattle producers not only in Florida, but nationwide. Now, Florida Senate Bill 1084 enacts a wide-ranging ban on cultivated meat, making it illegal for any person to manufacture for sale hold or offer for sale or distribute cultivated meat in Florida. Now, violators will face misdemeanor penalties and businesses caught selling the product could have their licenses suspended. We see the threat for what it is. So what is, why are, why are we talking about that here um, in Hardy County? Why do we have all these cattlemen here for the bill that we're going to sign today? Because one of the things that these folks want to do um, is they want to eliminate meat production in the United States or actually throughout the world. They view agriculture um, as a, they don't view their private jets as a problem with global warming, but they do uh, think that folks who are cattle ranchers are doing just things that really this before we were even a state, this stuff was going on in, the, in Florida and we would not have even become the state we were if we didn't have agriculture, particularly um, over the last uh, 150 years. So again, just such a rich history uh, for U.S. agriculture. 1521, you hear me right, 1521 is when cattle were first introduced by the Spanish to what is now the state of Florida. And a lot of people don't think Florida is a very big uh, cattle production state, but it ranks number nine in beef cow production, which, uh, again, not a lot of people know just what a big state it is for uh, for the cattle industry. But getting back to the fake meat ban down there in Florida, Governor DeSantis discussed that uh, back in 2021, the World Economic Forum published an article urging the consideration that folks eat insects as a source of protein rather than beef because of greenhouse gas emissions. But this is the this is the view. So what do they want to do? Well, uh, they want to basically eliminate meat. They want to eliminate cattle. They want to eliminate chickens, all this stuff. And they want to create protein in laboratories. Uh, so it's essentially lab created meat. And their goal is to get to a point where you will not be raising cattle, where you will not be developing uh, meat like we've been doing for uh, hundreds and hundreds of years in the state of Florida. And so it's not just a question of, oh, well, they want to put this out there on the market. If some people like it, they, 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 they can do it. That's not really what they're going for, because they know if that was put out there to compete with, with normal beef, that they would lose. Uh, so what they want to do is put that out there and then say, well, wait a minute, you can do this in a lab. You don't need to do uh, uh, the cattle. You don't need to do all this. So why don't you just phase that out? That's ultimately the goal. Now, they're not at the point where they're going to be able to execute that today. But I think part of being good stewards of these industries, of the state, of the public well-being, is to think forward and head off threats before they even come. I recognize the threats that we're seeing from some of these uh, elites throughout the world in places like Davos. I understand that they've put a target on the back of agriculture as being somehow driving all these problems. And in the state of Florida, we've put down the marker very clearly. Uh, we stand with agriculture. We stand with the cattle ranchers. We stand with our farmers uh, because we understand it's important for the backbone of the state. It's important for our culture. It's important for our heritage. So the bill that I'm going to sign today is going to say, basically, 
take your fake lab-grown meat elsewhere. We're not doing that in the state of Florida. Now, other states have passed similar legislation, including Alabama, Arizona, and Tennessee. Uh, One Nation has actually outright banned it as a whole. Italy uh, last year banned uh, the sale and consumption and and creation of lab-growing proteins there in the nation of Italy. Just uh, some news coming out of Florida that uh, is being applauded by family cattle producers who do the best they can and taking care of their land, improving it for the next generation and uh, providing a nutrient dense one ingredient protein, that being beef each and every day. Uh, uh, Speaking of beef, some good news uh, for the beef producers out across the countryside. Again, there's been a lot of reaction to the news of even influenza in cattle herds across nine States and those dairy cattle, uh, Uh, really have uh, that news in those dairy cattle infections with avian influenza really has caused a panic in the cattle markets. Uh, A few weeks ago, we even saw the country of Colombia uh, restrict beef imports from the United States from states that have positive cases of avian influenza in their dairy herds. But we have received the results that USDA says that all ground beef samples sent to the National Veterinary Services Laboratory for PCR testing were negative for H5N1 bird flu virus. That is great news. That's something we knew all along, that the food supply chain, that beef was safe to eat. This testing just reaffirms it. Um, It's reported that USDA's Food Safety and Inspection Service collected 30 samples of ground beef from retail outlets in the states with dairy cattle herds that have tested positive for H5N1. The National Laboratory reported that all samples tested negative for the virus. Again, These results reaffirm that the meat supply chain is safe. That's according to USDA in the Food and Drug Administration and common sense that uh, those of us in the countryside knew. That's that's what the results most likely would be. Now, uh, we should mention that on the dairy end of things, the Food and Drug Administration says preliminary results of testing additional dairy products continues to show that pasteurization inactivates the bird flu virus. The FDA has tested uh, 297 total retail samples of pasteurized in, of pasteurized dairy products, and the results released last week represent tests on 201 of those samples to date. Of course, that's good news across the board for our producers, especially on the beef end of things, that there is no trace of avian influenza in the U.S. beef supply chain. It's good to eat. It's safe to eat. And, of course, beef, it's what's for dinner. Hey, quick message from our friends at Ag Risk Advisors, and we'll see what those cow-calf pairs were bringing last week in a certain livestock market. Find out what it is right after this. Ready for a real PRF partner? He was willing to track us for a year and provide that data back to us for a year. That's a guy making a pretty big investment. At Ag Risk Advisors, this isn't our first rodeo. We are one of the most experienced in pasture rangeland forage. Honesty, commitment, trust. Many companies use these words. At Ag Risk Advisors, we earn them. Well, coming back today, we saw last week at the public auction yards, Billings, Montana. They had their replacement cattle special. Over 1,100 head of bred cows and pairs going through the ring. And the best demand was for the young age pairs with large calves at side. And demand for older broken mouth pairs was mostly moderate. Folks are hoping they can make a little money on those short termers here this summer and into the fall. Uh, prices for heifer pairs brought $2,800 up to $3,750. Cow calf pairs of the two to four year old range, $3,500 up to $3,750. Five to eight year old cows seeing a price of $3,175 up to $3,500. Older than five years old on the lower end, bringing $2,600 to $3,500. Lower on quality, I mean. The over eight year old short term cows, $2,200 to 2650 with calves on their sides. As for bred cows at pays last week, 2 to 4 year olds 1850 up to $3000, 5 to 8 year olds priced at 25 and a quarter up to 26 
75 shorter term over eight year olds 23 and a quarter up to 24 50. Hey, let's throw some sheep prices in here today. Let's go to Fort Collins, Colorado. Centennial Livestock last week, over 1,000 head selling. Feeder lambs traded $20 higher, while slaughter lambs were trading about $9 lower. Feeder lambs weighing 45 pounds brought $260 with 57 weight lambs, 279. Finished sheep and lambs weighing 74 pounds brought 286. 87 weight finished lambs, 282 with the 106 weight finished lambs bringing 200 and $66. Again, that's a quick look at some of our headlines here on the Lancast Ag Podcast. You can tune in to all the headlines impacting farmers and ranchers across the western United States every single day on our Western Ag Network radio programs airing on 110 radio stations across 10 states now. We just picked up Nevada last week. Also, our YouTube channel. You can watch all of our daily content there or visit westernagnetwork.com and give us a like and follow on Instagram and Facebook. Again, thanks for joining us for this smorgasbord of a show on the Lancast Ag Podcast. I'm Lane Northland. We'll catch you next time. Thank you for tuning in to the Lanecast with Talkin' Ag, Lane Nordland. For more on Lane, check out his Facebook page, Lane Nordland Ag Broadcaster and NordlandCommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the Lanecast on your Apple or Android devices. We look forward to joining you next time on the Lanecast.